Why, hello there, my name is Sandy Alnock. I'm an artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and I'm bringing you cute little stinkers. And I wanna remind you in this video, it's a hot mess until it's not. That is something a lot of people say about my stuff. And I wanna show you a couple of places where it looks like a hot mess for a few minutes. And if you keep going, you can often fix those things that seem to go wrong. And sometimes I do, do things deliberately so that they look a little mushy so that I can then fix them. And I'll explain to you how that works as I go. This is a real time video. So for those who wanna see real time coloring, this one goes out to you. This is a new stamp set, brand new from Art Impressions. And there's a couple images. I'll show you a little bit of each one in this video, but this is my favorite with this cute little couple. And it's two little skunks. I had to look up on the internet exactly where, which parts were black and which parts were white and where the, the stripes fall and all that kind of stuff. And I recommend you always do that. If you're gonna color an animal or something, go get some resource information. Because one of the things I noticed was that skunks seem to have a little stripe on their nose too. So I'm just gonna add a stripe by not coloring it on their noses. And I think it actually helps make them look more skunky if that makes sense. And I'm coloring with an N5 because I'm going to do black and I want them to be really good and dark. And if I were to start with a really light gray marker, that wouldn't necessarily work because then I'd have really light highlights. I want them to look like they're actually black in the, the black areas, but I want to have some definition there. So what I'm doing now is adding some actual black marker and I'm doing kind of little furry marks fur goes in the direction of the, the object itself. So you can see it kind of goes away from their face and it helps also to direct the eye to point toward the face. And in some of the areas down like on their arms and things, I can go solid. I don't have to do texture everywhere, but on the faces, it's really going to help. And it is going to be one of the places that's going to look messy for a little bit. And I'll warn you of that because some people say, what is she doing when they're watching my videos? And and this is how I color quite often. And actually when I'm coloring just by myself, I do it even more because I'm not worried about trying to explain to somebody that it's gonna look like a hot mess until it doesn't. I think one of the things where people do tend to have an issue is they don't wait long enough. They don't keep going. And when it starts looking like a mess, they think, oh, I've ruined it. And they start over and they stamp again or they give up on that stamp set. So I wanna encourage you to keep going and keep trying it and see if you can make something work. So that was the light and then the dark color. And now I'm going in with a medium color and I'm adding more little furry lines. And if you want them even thinner than this, just pull the pen even more vertically and it will get, you'll get little thinner, thinner furry lines. But I'm, you know, I'm not really worried about it because I want to have a good bit of color in here. I want to have a really rich looking dark for each of these little skunks because they're so cute. I'm adding a little more emphasis around the face, you know, around like the mouth and the cheek and, cheek and things just so that I get some real dimension there. But this is one of those places where it probably looks like a mess to your eye. And don't worry, please hang with me. And uh, as they say, wait for it because the next step will clear a lot of that up. But I'm just extending all those black shadows until I go back in now with my number five marker. So I, I'm, I'm returning to that base color again. And this is my routine I do with all my coloring is I return to my base color. And if there were areas that you wanted to have really light, you could leave them with one coat of that base color and it'll give you a fourth kind of color to, to expand the range without having to use another marker. So I'm coloring right over top of all that messy scribbling. Now look at the one on the left compared to the one on the right. And you can see it definitely smooths out, but it looks like there's some texture there. There is some fur for my little skunks. And you can do this on any animal with whatever colors you're using. Just put your fur in the under layers. And then when you put that top layer on, it's just gonna smooth it out enough. Now, if you want it to be perfectly smooth, you don't want to have all those lines in there, but I think on critters, having a little bit of fur really helps. Now here I'm trying to figure out which end is the tail of my, my little bow. And 
I decided yeah just a little bit of a darker red not a not going crazy with my usual three reds that I like to use just a little bit more and then I decided to work on the background before I go back and see if I want to add more color to my skunks I was debating whether I wanted to add any grays in the white parts of the skunks but what I was realizing when I squinted I saw all the black areas but I didn't see the white ones pop out if you look at your artwork and squint at it as you go you'll see things you'll see where there's enough contrast where there's a not not enough is there an area where you need to add another color beside it and that's where I decided to add a little bit in the background and this is also going to help me to make them look a little stinky at the end so you'll get to see some some little fun that I create for them since they are skunks you know gotta have a little skunk humor but I started out by working with you know a bunch of these, these light colors I wasn't sure how dark to go it's better to go lighter than darker and just start there and see if that's enough see if squinting at it starts to pop out that white and make the white look really white and it's starting to work I'm starting to get the feel of of the fact that there's some white in this image but still not a ton and I figured well let me see if I smooth out all of this all the way out to the outside edges will that help and it did help a little bit but not a ton and again I'm, I'm just gonna work in layers and keep going and I'm not worried about making it too super smooth at this point because I had the feeling I was gonna go in with more colors and that's where I decided to go in with a layer of W3 because that was a juicier marker than my W4 so I wanted to add a little more depth on the inside and that's starting to work for me much better starting to, to really get that white to pop out and then I just started fading it a little bit more as it got toward the top now this marker is getting a little bit on the dry side so I did go back in and use a little W0 and the camera turned off on me so I didn't get to show you that part but we'll get back to the background in a moment but I went in after I saw how all of that black and gray marker dried I went in and added a little bit more with a Copic multi-liner if it's going to be your last layer you don't even have to have a multi-liner you can do it with whatever color you want to and then I decided I needed another color for them to lay on just something on the ground I didn't want another gray I wanted something with a little bit of color to it and here's where I decided to go in and add some craziness to make them kind of stinky and I'm basically drawing like sort of an S curve, like a reverse S. I start out with a darker color and just kept going in with lighter and lighter ones, just kind of pulling that color around and making little little swirlies to make them look like they're stinky. And that's just to get it started. And then took a lighter color and just softened all that out. And this is one of those places where you can actually fix any, any of your weird blending. If things didn't blend quite right, I'm going to put little dots with my colorless blender and little hearts. Little hearts you can make with just a V basically and hearts and dots in the background. And I thought that would be really fun there. You know, little bubbles of gas from the stinky skunks. My uh, dog that I had when I lived in Montana used to go out and chase skunks and come back to the house smelling all nasty, but she loved it. She just thought it was the best thing in the whole wide world. <laughs> dogs don't seem to understand that skunks are not a friendly smell for the rest of us after I was done I added some dots of glossy accents to it and that made it even more fun I think on the finished card just mounted it on some uh, some black and red paper tied some ribbon around it links to all the supplies by the way are in the description down below as they always are and this is another image from the same stamp set did the same kind of coloring set the little fancier heart on there as this little guy is hugging the heart and I added again coming up from his tail some bubbles and you can do just straight old bubbles or you can do the hearts and here I decided to try just the hearts and added lots of glossy accents to make the candies and his little heart shine the, the candies are actually a separate stamp from the hearts and then finally this one since the air was the thing that was moving I decided not to make the tail stinky on this one and I made the bubbles in the air itself and here I don't even um, I don't even need to do the colors blender underneath I just made bubbles going across a little swoosh of sky in that blue green color so here's a couple more videos if you're interested in seeing some more from me 
Be sure to hit the subscribe button if you have not yet. There's always more coming from me three times a week. There's more information on this on the blog and a special announcement that's there. So you want to go check that out. And I will see you guys next time. You can find me on social as Sandy Almock, and I will see you out there on the interwebs. Have a fantastic day. Go create something wonderful.